What's up, pretty gang? It's your favorite nail tech, Peaches, back with another video. This is what my client is working with today. If you guys have not seen my previous video, I suggest going to take a look uh, and so that you can see what she came in with is this, how I dealt with that. That's what I'm showing in the last video, her removal and everything like that. And today I'm going to show you how I transformed her set into this, although we will be focusing in mainly just on the big toe because it was damaged. And I'm going to show you guys how I turned her feet into something suckable, delectable, something to be cherished and adored. Okay. But before we go ahead and get into that, I want you guys to know that I do have all of my coupon codes and my Amazon storefront linked in the description below if you expand it. Um, don't forget to follow me on social media to keep up with all the sets I do. Subscribe, notifications on so you don't miss a thing. All right? All right. So this is my client's starting point. This is the toe we are going to be focusing on, okay? She has a damaged toenail and this is not due to fungus. In fact, like I said, view my previous video if you want to know more all about you know what happened here but um, a quick backstory she actually uh, did not feel any type of damage uh, you guys know I'm using young nails protein bond by the way um, and candy yum yum for the not polish uh, y'all already know if it's not polished and not nothing so uh, she was damaged by well she doesn't exactly know but she does wear work boots and you guys I constantly tell people be careful with acrylic toes and work boots they should be very very natural if you're going to have any at all they should not be going over the tip of your toe and um unfortunately over time although she did not feel it hitting the tip top of your boots with your nails is an almost guaranteed way to hurt yourself okay and so she did go to the doctor was tested for fungus of course it's not fungus we can all see it with our own eyes i hope you would i don't see no comments about fungal infections y'all always do that but then ignore the girls on instagram who are actively working over active fungal infections okay so we're not gonna do that today so you know when it comes to damage like this you have to kind of start slow by building a base with what she's got because it is so small I'm effectively just covering the base and I'm going to start spreading from there. Okay, so we need to take this time and start building the sidewalls. And we are establishing if she had a toenail, right? Because her other toenail on her other big toe is fine. Okay, so I'm establishing if she had a toenail here, how wide would it be and what would it look like? So that's essentially what this first bead is for. Some people, depending on how their toenails are, um, like how they look from the damage it, it everything's gonna be different with how much um, acrylic you use I've been doing this for quite some time now so I chose to do this portion in one um, like medium sized bead rather than a couple of small beads so that's basically what I'm doing here I'm getting underneath making sure no acrylic is dripping down because you do not want acrylic to be all on the nail bed because otherwise as it grows out if it does because her doctor did also tell her that her toenail may not grow back which honestly I kind of agree with because those toenails she had for close to two months and there was literally no growth in the big toenail which is telling me that if it does grow back it's gonna be extremely slow process and might not grow at all like as much and or the other option is it's not gonna grow back at all okay so you want to make sure during this portion you are tucking your cuticles very well everything is of a consistency with your bead that is allowing you to mold and bend it kind of like a, a clay or a slime a play-doh rather than like a loose bead because otherwise you're gonna have acrylic going everywhere so I if you are not skilled in doing uh, like transformations like this or I call them um what do I call them oh man I'm sorry my brain is dead um, not restorations man what do I be calling this reconstructions boom if you're not skilled at this please do not just be taking clients willy-nilly because her last nail person that she went to did that and honestly it could have really really put her in a worse situation if you're not skilled at this it's okay to practice gradually like get your feet wet with acrylic toes maybe start with oh hey this person is missing some toenail but when it comes to extreme damage like this if your technique is not correct you will cause even more of a problem um than they already had okay so now that i kind of get those side walls down the next bead is going to be basically i am going extending the tip right so I'm, that's what I'm basically doing. I'm extending the tip, extending the tip until I get to the length that I feel is appropriate. And so as I'm doing this, I'm keeping these sidewalls in mind. I'm cleaning up the underneath 
you, this is a patient process, okay? Uh, overall, I will say her set, like, I, I book reconstructions for an hour and a half. So when I am fixing toenails like this, whether it's one, two, you know, whatever, um, it does take me an hour and a half. So basically just 15 minutes longer than um, regular. And that also includes design, like if they want it French tip bling, anything, I can get it done all in the same time. So that might seem like very quick to some, if you're not you know used to doing acrylic toes period so if you are going to do this on clients you need to give yourself the appropriate amount of time okay so you can see as I clean under there it kind of lifts the lip of the front up and then I kind of pat it down and it's basically a very much back and forth back and forth thing okay so I do want you guys to know that no matter how you slice it the side view is gonna look a little bit different typically these reconstructions it's gonna look a little bit thicker than it normally would and that's simply because when you have like a little bit of toenail like that it typically is gonna grow in as a stump for those of you who didn't know and so it's kind of hard to disguise that and I'm not gonna make the rest of the nail like even thickness with that stump so we're basically gonna try and find a nice middle ground also the discoloration is something that you are gonna be able to see uh, through colors unless it's dark colors um, but again, we don't want to risk making it too thick because that can also cause problems besides just making it look unnatural. So as you can see, I got it down. We're doing a lot of padding, a lot of molding, shaping, and I needed it to be a little bit drier. So I went ahead and I did two other toenails. And so then I felt like I can come back and I'm going to extend it again because she does have enough sturdiness there that we can do like a natural extension so typically if your toenail like if you don't have much there like in this instance right I'm only gonna do you to the tip of the toe max depending on your situation the more toenail that you have the longer I feel comfortable making it same goes for people who have lifting in their toenails some people have had damage that even though their toenail grows back it may have um, permanent lifting to where your uh, natural nail is not gonna ever adhere back to the natural nail bed and so typically this is that length as well but of course for everyone it's just going to be dependent on your personal feet the strength in that toenail how long is the it has an injury happened things like that okay so as i get to the the closer to the length that i want you can see i'm doing a lot of padding and pressing i'm following that guideline we set in the beginning because once again if you do not set yourself that guideline from the beginning and you try and do all this at one time you're gonna have a lot of acrylic to navigate and the underneath, like where the nail bed is at, is it's not gonna be nice. Okay, I have definitely dealt with doing this all different types of ways when I started doing reconstructions. And what you don't want is any sharp pieces of acrylic pressing into their toenail, I mean their toe, their real toe, okay? Because over time that can be painful and it can be dense and yeah, we want them to be able to still also be able to clean underneath these enhancements. When you have that much nail missing it's very very important as well as to allow some airflow so that way moisture doesn't get trapped okay because that can actually lead to fungus and we don't want that so with this tip right here i was basically trying to get the length that i wanted but also clean underneath so it wasn't hitting her natural nail bed and it was kind of frustrating me i did end up doing one more little extension in the front so that way i can get rid of some of that gapping and also so i can make an even thickness in the front if you can see um, but as far as length this is pretty much as long as it's gonna go and I felt like okay this is a really great result we're giving her so I use my brush sometimes I'll use a cuticle pusher I will go underneath and any extra acrylic that's kind of poking out weird or if it's just like kind of stuck there I will go ahead and remove that because not only do we want a beautiful enhancement from the top view and as good as we can get from the side view but that underneath people very much neglect it and that is a really important part of acrylic enhancements so okay you can see right here i thought i didn't show it but i guess i did um i am going oh you know what that's because i'm not really extending it so i put a bead up there because i need to smooth out the surface if you guys could see like uh, about a minute or so ago the top was a little unlevel and that's because i was focusing on doing my extension and so at the end I will typically do this so that way it gives a nice even smooth layer and then I will basically see about this is how I get 
everything to be as equal to that like stump area as possible and sometimes you can even hide a little bit more color and I did put some more beads in the cuticle area because I felt like there was um, on the left side where my thumb is I felt like that was kind of sinked down a little bit and if you don't put enough acrylic around the cuticle it's you're gonna have some that files away and you don't want dips anywhere in there because that's gonna cause for inconsistency and then I added off off camera I think I added another bead in the cuticle area oh nope I did it here okay I haven't watched this footage since I did this like a day ago I'm sorry you guys uh, but yeah so, so you can see how I did add that for the discoloration but you know what truth is when you go ahead and file and I was trying to make everything a little less bulky some of that is going to file away but you can see even with the extra bead the discoloration is going to be there so don't be alarmed at that you need to set realistic expectations for your clients this is why it's all over my page i talk about and educate people about the benefits and the and the you know what is acrylic toes for what can they do for you and what are they not there for okay acrylic toes cannot change the way your toenails grow they can not change the discoloration that you have acrylic toes is simply aesthetic and it's there to help disguise <clears throat> damage that you have and boost your confidence but underneath this it's still going to be your toenail okay mm. so you can see i'm trying to get like a nice even overall layer and i'm looking underneath to make sure like okay is this good enough for me and it was so here we go now when it comes to filing everyone's gonna be different we're gonna try and get a nice flush look but keep in mind like I said because a lot of times when people have toenails that fall off and they're growing back in it's very stump like so the cuticle area is not going to be as flush as maybe um, what you're used to and even though it does it does look flush and I'm not talking about the cuticles having like gaps or indents I'm talking about the okay with toenails you don't really like per se need like a real apex area but it's gonna be a little bit more humped or bubbled on toenails like this because it's literally it's very thick starting from the base okay so don't be I don't want to say don't be too concerned but at a certain point you're gonna have to like stop filing because either you're gonna file all the product away and expose the actual toenail or you're gonna hurt the person so there, there is a balance when it comes to filing so after I kind of file and seal the cuticle areas, I'm going to go right in for filing the actual enhancement with my hand file. And I need to establish the shape, get rid of this underneath. You see how I'm going underneath? There's no toenail there or anything. It's purely acrylic and I don't want it to look like it's just sitting floating on the toenail or anything like that. I want to make it look as natural as possible. Be careful when you're doing this because you don't want to A, cut somebody, and B, accidentally round out your corners, which can happen, okay? And I'm going over top so that way I can have the smoothest result possible. I like to hand file my enhancements on hands and feet because I feel like this gives a nice smoother look versus an e-file. Like if you already have lumps and bumps, I feel like the shape of the e-file can just enhance them and it takes more time to, to even stuff out. That's just my personal opinion. So I'm looking from all sides to make sure like, okay, where should I file, where should I not? And if you look closely, you can kind of see what I mean at the cuticle area. It is a little bit thicker there, but I feel like it still looks nice. The alternative would be to thicken it up more, like below the cuticle area. And I was like, you know, I'm not going to do that. This looks pretty good. It looks way better than what she had before. And so I'm just doing some finish filing. And of course, this isn't the full filing process. I go back and forth making sure that it looks the right length and everything versus the other toenails but i hope this guys i mean i hope this guys i hope this helped you guys i hope you guys enjoyed seeing this whole process from the removal to what i gave her she was extremely happy i'm extremely happy with the final result and i'm showing you guys all this to just show you that acrylic toes yes is ooh, so beautiful so nice but there are like some serious stuff that goes on behind the scenes and if you are uneducated or you don't know what's going on with any of that you can definitely harm your client and a lot of clients they'll just not go back but they will not take the proper steps to hold the person accountable who kind of did that nonsense okay so hoping this this provided awareness and also was just something nice to look at 
And I just really hope you guys enjoyed it. I appreciate you guys. We're getting so close to 5,000 subscribers. I'm really excited. I appreciate you guys. And uh, this is this is pretty much the final look of the big toe. This is the final look overall. You can't even tell which toenail was damaged, just the way I like it. And I have some more videos coming for you guys, including some Capricorn videos. And I'll see you in the next one.